So the pattern that we've seen in Paul's writings, all of Paul's, all, Paul of Paul's writings, is this. Paul, and we saw in 2 Corinthians 5 and in Colossians 3, you find this in Romans 6, it's all over the place. Paul first states what is real, and then he states what we should think and believe and imagine based on what is real, and then he states how we should be, behave based on what is real. Here's what's real, therefore here's how you should think, therefore here's how you should behave. It's all about congruity. Getting our mind and our life to be in congruity with what God says is real. Everything in the kingdom, everything about salvation, everything about the good news is all about congruity. It's really that simple. Getting our mind and our life to line up with what God says is true. God creates the reality. That's God's grace. God's grace manifested in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, creates this reality when Jesus died. If one died, for, if one died for all, then all have died. Paul says in Second Corinthians five. The new reality is that as all were in Adam, so all are in Christ. The new reality created in the death and resurrection of Jesus is that that everything that stood between us and God has been removed. Praise God. The new reality is that all sin has been abolished. All strongholds have been abolished. All addictions have been abolished. All oppression has been abolished. All injustice has been abolished. All alienation from God has been abolished. All rebellion has been abolished. Every stronghold, everything that separated us from God has been abolished. And therefore, the new reality created in the death and resurrection of Jesus is that all is forgiven. All is reconciled. All is harmonized. All is peaceful. All is made well. That's the new reality created by the outlandish grace of God manifested in the, in the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's there. And that's why Paul says, you are already chosen. You are already holy. You are already beloved. You can't achieve that. You can't strive for that. You don't have to earn that. You don't have to work towards it. It's real. It's done. It was created with the death and resurrection of Jesus. You see? I don't, I, I don't care how unchosen you feel. You're chosen. Sorry. I don't care how unholy you appear, you're holy, uh, deal with it. You know, I don't care how unloved you feel, you are loved with an everlasting love. A love that could not possibly be approved of, that's, that's already done. Yeah. Our job is to just agree with that. It, that is the kingdom right there, that's salvation. That's the good news. The good news is the best news. It's the most wonderful, mind-boggling, outlandish unfathomable news you can possibly imagine if you if it sounds too good to be true that just means you're going down the right path because it's it's infinitely better than that god's already done it it's already done and our job then is to agree with that to to get our mind and our life to line up with that we're saved by grace alone through faith alone grace alone creates the reality faith alone then accesses it or applies it to our life, gets in line with that. And the more in line we are with what is real, the more we experience it as real, and therefore the more we manifest it as real. And that's how the kingdom of God spreads. We become conduits of the kingdom.